I'd be safe and warm If I was an island California dreaming No Привет, любители страйкбол, с вами Спан 48, и это вечер с бородатым страйкболистом, и сегодня мы поговорим про страйкбол за рубежом, а конкретно в Соединенных Штатах Америки. Мой гость сегодня игрок с позывным Эшсофт Хесмин, и она нам, в общем-то, расскажет про то, как у нее там играется. Надеюсь, вам будет интересно, как и мне. Предварительных слушаний не было, поэтому прям вот сейчас сам и узнаю. Да, она, кстати, с телефона это все делает, поэтому не удивляйтесь, что иногда ракурс меняется. So, uh, hello. Uh, the first uh, questions uh, will be, well, kind of introducing yourself. So, where are you from and, uh, well, couple of words about you. So. Um, I'm from the United States. I'm from California. And I've been playing Airsoft since 2010. Uh, why uh, did you decide to start playing? Oh, it's a kind of unusual uh, kind of hobby for girls, girls uh, well, at least yeah. in Russia. Honestly, at first, I didn't want to play it. Um, I'm not, I was never good with pain growing up, so I didn't think it was something that I would have much fun in. Um, but my boyfriend at the time, my husband now, um, insisted that I played because he played. So I told him I would try a game, and after that, I had so much fun that I never wanted to stop playing again. <laughs> and I've been playing ever since. <laughs> uh... So, uh, I showed you kind of uh, Russian style airsoft. So, what uh, the main difference between uh, yours airsoft uh, in US and, uh, well, in Russia, as you think, as you see it? Um, we don't have tanks, for one. I don't know. I, from what I've seen, the only really difference is that you guys seem to have way better equipment to play rather than us who people are using their actual cars to play. So I think that's the main difference that I see. So you guys have actual tanks. Yep. Yeah, I've seen videos like this before. But I didn't know they were from Russia. Sorry. That's so cool. That's pretty cool. I wish yeah. we had tanks. Uh, okay, uh, next question. Is uh, the airsoft for you uh, more sport or well, the fun part of the hobby? I would say both because it takes kind of a lot of physical activity to do and the, um, the whole two teams playing against each other for basically the same objective is kind of sport-like. But um, in a sense, it's soft for fun. Well, as I know, uh, in the United States, the airsoft mostly is a uh, well, uh, game where you need to pay someone to play, well, kind of, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, in Russia, we have our own equipment, our own uh, places to play mostly, and uh, well, we pay for play. Uh, only on big games where to, you need to, well, get uh, 
the guys who organize it a uh, little money to or to compensate their expenses uh, how it goes uh, in the United States you came somewhere you want to play how it really goes when when you want to play a game what's your steps for it um, well most people there are certain people who go around and find places they'll call they'll find out who owns the property or who manages the property and I'll contact them and ask for permission to play. Um, but mostly it's big game, like, um, you know, people who put together games, like um, there's American Milsom, Milsom West, Lion Claws. Um, those people go and find really nice places to play. And I'm not exactly sure what process they take. I just see, oh, they're having a game here. That looks like a place I would want to play. You pay and then you go play. Um, I haven't really tried to host a game or find a place to play on my own, but there is people who will find land, ask for permission, and then play there. I think that's basic steps. Because there is free games, but they're usually like a little sketchy locations to where you're not sure if you actually have permission to be there. A lot of times they get broken up by the police if they are kind of free games. So, yeah. Uh, well, on the games by American Meal Team uh, and so on. Uh, well, when uh, the people organize it well. Yeah, yeah. They're really, really, there we go. Organizing. Just to prevent from trouble. Yes. And it's actually better to do that because then you know that you're not liable for anything that happens, you know? You know that you do have permission to be there and that the cops won't show up and break you up, you know? Yeah, it's uh, well, worse than playing and then the cops being like, oh, you have to go home. And then you're like, oh, bummer. Yeah, uh, you know? and don't you have troubles in your state with, uh, well, airsoft guns, AGs, uh, GBBs maybe, well, with police? Oh, you need to wear this red caps or something? Uh, yeah, well, some fields require the, the barrel covers, the, like this little soft thing that you put over your barrel and you have to wear it at the safe zone at all times because they do have smaller games to where you show up you play for like 30 minutes then you take a break and then you play for 30 more minutes and then you take a break and games like that when you're in the safe area they want you to have something over your barrel just in case you accidentally shoot your gun you know um was that the question well, it's a uh, part of a question, but it's yeah, really interesting because uh, we have no uh, such things. We just uh, get out magazine of the gun, and that's all the safety we have. <laughs> yeah, no. Also, to transport our gun, we have to have an orange tip, and um, now they changed a lot to where we have to have stripes on our gun in order to identify it as an airsoft gun and not a real gun. Yeah, that's the question. Well, uh, is it any troubles with the police guys who, well, accidentally see you with the, the gun? So uh, you had to identify that is a toy or... Yeah, yeah somehow. Because, I mean, they look pretty realistic. So you have to... Well, I, I kind of... Because I, I feel like you can kind of tell, especially like if you look at the magazine part where it loads, you're like, oh, obviously this is not a real firearm. And I do have friends who are policemen who play airsoft. Um, so that's nice. It's just basically don't carry it out in public, keep it in the gun bag and you're fine. Yeah, it's uh, quite similar, maybe in ma many countries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just be smart with it and you're fine. Okay. Yeah, I've seen uh, many of your photos on Facebook and uh, I've seen you got a couple of uh, pinkish things on you always, like uh, mechanic sweaters and uh, scarf, something. Uh, it's kind <laughs> of a, well, brand for you or just because you're a girl? I just, honestly, uh, when I first saw the pink mechanics gloves, I was like, those are so cute and they're really comfortable. So I just kind of like them. And I do kind of like having that pink ac accent. Uh, when I started playing a lot of the time and I would just wear whatever, um, people would be like, oh, you're going to stick out. You're not going to get anyone wearing pink. 
And I kind of got this mentality like, oh yeah, I'll show you. So I started wearing bright colors just to show people that it doesn't really matter what you wear as long as you know how to maneuver in the environment you're in, you should be fine, you know? Yeah. Like I actually have a pink combat shirt. Yeah, I don't know if you want to see it. <laughs> I have a pink combat shirt. Whoa. I've seen a couple of your photos from uh, Road uh, to Rostov kind of game uh, when you, Jet, and many guys were in Russian uniforms, uh, well, acting like a Russian, even trying to speak Russian. Uh, I don't uh, think of what the Russian accent. I should probably listen to you talk more often because... <laughs> <I don't. laughs> well, it was the most interesting part for all Russian viewers uh, when they seen uh, how Jet trying to speak Russian on these games. <laughs> Really? Uh, okay. Uh, did you like to wear Russian uniform camo equipment or it's uh, more natural to you to wear, uh, well, NATO kind of equipment? I actually find Russian camos to be way more comfortable than American camos. Like they're almost like pajamas. I'll wear like comfortable pants underneath. Like I'll just wear sweatpants underneath and it's just nice. You know, um, I actually like Russian camo better than NATO camo. I feel like I need to get more. I don't like the helmets because they're extremely heavy, but I, I like the Russian camo more. Even though I have a lot of just camo in general, <laughs> I'm not picky. <laughs> I like to be able to join whatever team I want to join, but I feel like the Russians have more fun. So I go with them. Well, uh, at this point, I think uh, is uh, different for us because, uh, well, uh, in Russia, most guys like uh, NATO uniform, American, maybe a kind of cry precision, something like that, cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah because uh, <laughs> well, you need to look like uh, real uh, Spec Ops guys, but sometimes you have kind of a joke that uh, Navy SEALs look at the photos of the Russian air softers and trying to get like them. Yeah, and which is kind of true if you come to an American game and go to the Russian side. There's a lot of ex-military people pretending to be Russian. And I don't know, I, I, I like the Russian side every time I play at a Milsom game because they just have so much fun. And I'm like, well, the NATO guys are kind of more serious. We're cool guys. We don't want to get our camel dirty, you know. In well, <laughs> yeah, we really know because, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the most uh, trouble here that it's not, well, we cool guys, we don't want to get us our uniform dirty because it's uh, coasts, maybe, well, kind of, if, well, uh, cry precision uh, <laughs> pants here is about, well, now is it $500, something like that, so we don't want to get them dirty, really. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't either. <laughs> so, I think I would spend five hundred dollars on camo. When you can spend uh, well, one hundred dollars for a uh, full Russian equipment. <laughs> Actually, uh, the I, the Russian camo I have, I traded for stuff stuff for, because I'm cheap and I like to, and I like to. Um, trade rather than spend money um but the, the last game i went to i have a friend who loves russian gear and he's always buying it but he never plays so i just kind of borrowed his gear and took it out for you know i tried it out i let him know how it worked <laughs> your camera it works good <laughs> you know if he's not going to use it i might as well break it in for him yeah, it's but it's much better than it's just laying in the wardrobe somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> for collection purposes. Okay, and uh, well, uh, as I uh, understand, you have a lot of uh, gear, but uh, how much uh, well guns you have? Me personally, I have two AKs, a gas AK, and an AEG. I have. A Crytek SPR, and then I have my 1911, and I think that's it for me. 
my husband loves collecting guns, so he has all kinds of guns. Me personally, I just, I kind of get attached to my guns and I feel like it's not fair for them if I don't use them, you know? <laughs> so I feel like I have feelings and if they don't get used, they'll be upset and next time I go use it, it won't work. So I try to keep my collection small, that way I can use all my guns. Right now my favorite is my 700, so I've kind of been prefer like using that one preferably, but I just have three. Okay, <laughs> free guns, right? yes, and, and my sidearm, my 1911. The next question about the guns itself. Well, what's, what's the maximum uh, velocity for your guns in your state? It depends on the field. Most fields are 400 FPS. But if you have like a sniper, you can go up to 450, I think. Huh? Well, it's uh, kind of similar. Because, uh, well, for CQB games, we mostly have uh, 360 FPS, well, 220 meters, well, yeah, around 360. And Yeah. for uh, uh, sniper rifles, we have about Like 500? 500, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, It's that's around 500. But they have to stay within like 50 feet and they have to have a sidearm in most fields. Mm Yeah. It's like yeah, our own rules <laughs> for it. Yeah, and -hmm. <laughs> so. a uh, lot of players so uh, in Russia love uh, face masks because uh, well, Yeah. it's too expensive to get new teeth. My teeth are expensive. I like my teeth. That's. That's one thing. The only time I don't really wear a full face mask is like when I went to Road to Rostov and um, it's kind of like a outdoor field. So I'm like the odds of me getting shot in the face are slim, which actually I did get shot in the face, but it was from pretty far away. So it didn't really do much. That's about the only time I won't wear fa full face protection. But other than that, I wear full face protection. Whoa, a lot of patches on your wall, really. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but um, I think we have to get going because we have to travel about two hours to play right now. Oh, okay. Вот и все, спасибо, ребят. Хасмин нужно покидать нас, у нее игра там буквально через вот несколько минут, надо уже уезжать, так что спасибо ей, спасибо за просмотры, подписываемся, может быть, даже продолжим, если вам будет интересно, и, в общем-то, Задавайте свои вопросы, я постараюсь там как-то потом это все в следующем видео скомпилировать. Всем спасибо, пока. Окей, okay. okay, thank you. see ya. Bye.